it's Valentine's Day and what better time to spend your lovely romantic day than trying out World of Mass Development or rather Slightly Mass Studios World of Mass Development Project, Project Cars and see where the project is now. Uh, it looks like that they've visited quite a few modern art galleries recently and the interface has gone all modern crazy with I'm not quite sure what that is, ink and uh, polygons and a moon. It's maybe it's some kind of abstract representation of, of the racetrack. But very nice, uh, quite striking. It stands out from other simulators or other driving games at this point in time, which is cool. I've been in a nightclub. Let's go, let's try. I haven't actually driven this for a good couple of months, so it'll be interesting to see what's changed with project cars in that intervening time period uh let's do a quick race i'm just going to go with what it goes with so <laughs> i've not changed any settings all all defaults i'm driving with a g25 i'm using shadow play to whoa my god what is going on i'm using shadow play to record this i'm not quite sure what i was about um Right, it appears to have put me on Laguna Saka, Saka, Laguna Saka, with a Caterham. It's both an awesome track and an awesome car. First thing to notice, the, the crowd looks really nice. I love the little waving flags and the people. It makes it feel like you're actually at a active live race event, which is really cool. A lot of driving games seem to feel rather devoid of uh, life. Our car seems a little bit floaty on the handling. Uh, not. I kind of feel what's going on. Going to give us a little bit of a drive before saying anything. Of course, it's always easy to jump to uh, jump to conclusions with driving simulators. Normally, though, I think when you when you get in a sim car, if you've done a lot of sim racing, you have a general expectation of the physics, and you'll you can pretty much immediately feel if the physics seem right or not, or at least if they're consistent or not. Of course, you can never find you can never find the physics holes immediately. What am I talking about? Look at that moon. Oh, I really do like this track. Just want to get a feel for the car. It seems a bit floaty. The force feedback seems really light. As I said, I'm using a G25. Normally, uh, the force feedback with the G25 is quite direct feeling. With you being able to feel little undulations and track texture and the loading of the car although the g25 is really slow to rotate you can generally get a good feel for what's going on the uh, physics seem a lot more progressive from when i last played it though i do feel a bit detached from the car Seems uh, very stable though. Not really put it in a uh, testing situation. I'm not sure what the graphics settings are on at the moment. I'm going to have to go through this again afterwards. As I say, this is just me loading up the game. Oops, out of the box to see how it performs and what it's like. Dabbing the brake on there, the car had a nice bit of grip going in. It definitely seems like an improvement from when I last played it, where the uh, the cars were really, really erratic. A 
this almost feels as if it's got some kind of assist on though. So it's hard to know. Maybe they've improved the physics and made the car more stable. Maybe I'm just playing with assists on. I'm going to do one more lap as it is and then double check over all the settings. The force feedback's not really giving me enough feel to know through the force feedback alone if I'm applying too much brake. Going into that first corner there, I was braking too hard and obviously going in a straight line. But there wasn't really any communication of the front wheels losing grip. That's, the understeer doesn't seem to be coming through the force feedback at all. But as everyone knows, force feedback is a bit of a beast. It's always the sort of thing that needs a bit of tweaking to get the most out of it. Everyone's obviously using different force feedback wheels. So the developer, I guess, has to just hit a middle ground and then allow people to set it up as do they like it. Personally, I really like the... F oh, I've got oh, slower. I really like the force feedback in... Uh, well, I find iRacing, Game Stock Car, and a set of Corsa all have really nice force feedback when you set it up just right. The car seems this seems really stable. I've not really put it in a situation though that is requiring me to particularly balance it. I'm gonna go back to the menus after this. car seems really controllable I mean it feels a little bit sluggish but and slightly dislocated from where I'd expect it to go based off the tyres I don't really make any sense it seems to be moving around a bit wonkily but it's stable so <laughs> either I'm playing with assists on or they've actually made the physics a bit more manageable And for me, having a car that you can play with is a fundamental aspect of a simulator and probably the first thing that a developer needs to get right. So if they have indeed got that right, then it's a party. See, I said I was going to stop a lap ago, but I'm doing another lap, so that's that can only be a good sign. Oh. <laughs> Mind you, I have had a beer before starting this video, so it might be a little bit erratic. Let's go back to the menu and see. Okay, the interface is somewhat confusing. Retire. That's nice. Nice little bumper there. Thank you for that. Let's go to the settings, options and help. Let's go through everything. Gameplay, let's hope assist weren't on. Handling mode, pro, no assist, no assist, no assist, no assist, very good. Realism, light, that's nice to be able to turn the HUD down and not have crap all over the screen. Damage, oh, I just put visual only because I'm a noob. Pit, engineer, yeah, no, no. Auto start engine, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Looks like it was all on the right settings, so that's good. Maybe it remembered them from last time I played the game. So. Oh. Let's do another event. So far though, that car specifically, it did feel a bit soggy and the force feedback, uh, the force feedback wasn't really communicating much, but crucially, the car was very stable. Um, I didn't get into any moments where I felt particularly out of control of the car. It did feel as if I was a little bit, like the car had a little bit of its own thing going on, but like it wasn't as tight as I'd probably expect that car to be, but it wasn't 
as erratic as earlier builds of uh, project cars have been, which is fantastic. So let's uh, let's continue. This interface is actually bloody confusing. <laughs> then there's a little modern art tab in the corner explaining everything. Uh, okay, Korea solo. This could be to do with my intelligence levels being quite low as well. Quick race weekend. I do my free practice, but I want to pick a different car. Location, vehicle. Okay. I was just being a bit special. This screen will ultimately allow you to change your car right here. Until then, please use the old method. Okay. So obviously still, as everyone knows, Project Cars is still in development and they keep trying new things out. So this is a mishmash of different ideas at the moment. Uh, where's my car though? The old method. <laughs> but the, yeah, this... Guess. told me not to do that and I did where do I pick my car from though once they've set this up properly that'll be a far more intuitive way of setting it up a, a set of courses uses that where you basically just you have your location your vehicle even our factor uses that and it's a nice tried and tested way to know which vehicle you've picked what your location is and to jump straight in unfortunately at the moment because this is obviously still been worked out. Uh, click into the left. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh dear. I'm failing the intelligence test here. Maybe I can select it. Oh, I can select it. Okay. Let's try this Palma Jaguar. Uh, whoops. Palma Sport. Palma Sport 2. I want the uh, the JPM, the, this, the rubbish one, not the good one. Okay, I'll just do this one, whatever. Right. Has that actually selected it? Change... Okay, location. Let's try a different location. Let's try. Uh, they've got um, Donington, but they've. Not, they, I don't think they've got the license for it yet. So it's called something else. Oh, Brands Hatch. Do I have access to it with my peasant account? Brands. Oh yes, fantastic. Brands Hatch, an awesome track. Um, I wish they did F1 there still, obviously it's really narrow track, but it just makes for exciting driving. Nice, oh, it should be interesting. Of course, one thing that always stand well, four speed back's really heavy when still. One thing that r really stands out with uh, P cars is just the graphics, uh, the amount of assets on screen. And I, like I said, I'm running um, shadow play and recording, but I'm still getting a really good frame rate. Um, I didn't go through the graphics settings there, but they, I think it's probably on like medium. And it's it's running really well. Let's see how this car handles. It's to be understeering a lot. It seems a bit floaty. It's hard to know which car is uh, where in development uh, in terms of the tyre model or what they're actually doing to the car, the physics as a whole. So you could pick a car in this game and think, oh, you know, this is, the game's garbage. But it could just be that that car hasn't really had the development on it. This seems to get, the car just, as it loses traction, this is just, yeah, it's just sort of flopping around. There's no real feel. Oh dear, oh, it feels awful. See, this is this car seems more reminiscent to uh, earlier builds. Let's do a couple of laps. The details are really nice though. I, 
I think this, 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 the uh, the crowds really stand out. I just like the nice flag animations. People waving at you. I wish that was something that was in other driving games or simulators. And of course, they haven't actually gone too far. Rather, you, you'll find other games like uh, Grid and Dirt and stuff where they, you know, there's so much crap at the side of the track and it just irritates you rather than making the track feel like a live environment with people spectating. Whereas I think with Project Cars, they've actually done a really good job of making it look full, but not not ridiculous. I mean, even Race Room, they put these stupid brake markers all over the place that should have probably been done as a UI element for people that don't know where the braking points are. I think once you've used this menu, when they set it up finally, um, I think it should be a lot more intuitive than they have previously, so that's cool. Um, what should we go for? Oh, let's try single-seater. That's a good way to see what things feel like. It's still the same track. Let's go for it. Start. Where's the start button? Nah. All right, this should be interesting. Oh. Of course, real world drivers are oh, bugging me. I did not select the car. This is what happened before. It's, you would have thought from what I clicked through on the menu there that I actually picked that car, but I didn't. Presumably when they implement this new menu system properly, it'll be a lot more clear when you've actually selected. Look, there we go. Oh, wrong thing. Oh. <laughs> Car, 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 car. I'm just going to assume that's right there. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh. The interface is a simple thing to uh, implement. I mean, it's hard to get right, but it's not exactly a technological challenge. Whoa! The rear wheels want to spin up. That does not feel right at all. I mean, really, I think uh, single-seater, like F1-style cars, are a really good test of a simulator because they really do push things to the limit in terms of the, the tyres, the grip. Go-karts as well seem to be a really good way to test a driving simulator. Because you can find like simulators that aren't particularly advanced that can still do a reasonable job of simulating a touring car. This does not feel right at all. Oh dear. The force feedback's not really communicating what the car's doing. Oh, it keeps... The rears just keep losing grip. I mean, it's more stable than what it was before, but the inherent characteristics of this SMS physics are still there from what was in the early builds of the game. Uh, maybe the, I mean, maybe these cars don't have the new newer tyre model. Maybe they've not had the same development as other cars. Again, it's hard to know what's where in the development, what's had more time than other things. For all I know, they're going to swap these cars out or swap the underlying physics out. I really have got no, absolutely no confidence in what the car's going to do. I mean, if I jump into iRacing, or especially a set of Corsa, immediately I can have a really good idea of what the car's going to do, be that through the physics or the force feedback. This just seems really erratic. Um, same with... Um, 
game stock car. That, that, that's a really transparent and obvious to drive game. The cars just handle as you'd expect them to. Even the 80s F1 cars, which are really twitchy and quite a challenge to drive, but they don't really do anything you wouldn't expect them to do after... <laughs> Why am I drifting that corner? After two, two, three laps in AC or... Oh dear. After two or three laps in AC or um, game stock car, you, you sort of know what you're going to get. There's still lots to play with, but it's just predictable. Again, I just I just feel dislocated from the car. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe there's something wrong with the game. Maybe there's something wrong with my steering wheel. Maybe I've just drunk too much beer. As this is now, I'd rather be playing even GTR Evo. Feels better than this with that F3 car. Or what, I don't know what it is, F3000? And that's, to me, that in the GTR Evo, the F3000 just feels really sluggish and gloopy and boring to drive. But, I don't know, it feels better than this. It just feels to me like it'd be another one of those cases where you're just going to memorise some... Rather than driving by through feedback from what the car's doing and what's going on and reacting to it and playing with the car, you're just going to... To drive this track fast with this car in its current state, it's a pure memory, a pure memory game of learn you know, where the, where the specific brake point is, apply the brake, coast through the corners a bit, correct a tiny bit, but it just doesn't, I just don't feel connected to the car. But it is more stable, it is more stable than it was in previous builds. So it's got that going for it. I'm visually uh, very impressed. Whoever, whoever does the, uh, well, it's the, the, the track designers as well as the guys that program the shaders and the engine and the core, the core technologies that SMS have developed, they've done a really good job on it. I mean, you can see there's a lot going on with the lighting and the texture and the, the amount of assets on the screen, and it's running really well. I'm just running on an i7 with a GTX six seven with a GTX 760 Nvidia GTX 760 and it's it's easily running above 60 FPS 70 FPS I wonder how many people actually get oh that was so stupid I wonder how many people are actually going to watch this Let's Play up to this point. The most boring video online. A guy driving a game that's still in development. Talking about physics on Valentine's Day. What's more romantic than sim racing by yourself caressing the luscious worn out leather of a five year old G25? Nothing. Right, time to pick a different car. Right, um, let's try another car. I'm going to stop after this car um, and then I'm not sure if I can take any more project cars. Oh, the back mono would be a good car. That's I think that's in the centre course as well. So, oh no, it's the Expo. Let's see in a set of course there. Unless I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm just being stupid. Oh, let's, there we go, let's try this. Pagini Zonda R. 
Really nice car model, really nice texture work. Nice classical background music as well. Let's change location to... Oh yeah, it'd be nice to see Donington actually. Uh, where's Donington? Well, Derby Park. Close, close to Donington. It's in Derbyshire, I guess. Or is it in Leicestershire? No, I think it's in Derbyshire. You see, where Donington, where the Donington racetrack is, where they hold the Download Festival, Rock Festival, um, it's actually on the border between Derbyshire, Leicestershire, and another Shire. I can't remember which one. Uh, I'm so like, right, okay. Da, 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 da. Start. Donington is uh, an interesting place. It's a good place to go walking. This is the track history here, for those of you who want to know about the Donington race track. Right, we're on the track now, I don't need to talk about track history. Ooh. Which way am I going? Oh, it's just the other way, isn't it? I'm so stupid. I think this car is in a set of Corsa. Uh, in which case, I should do a comparison. Again, uh, track modelling is really nice in this. I've, oh my god, I feel totally dislocated from the car. Maybe it's the force feedback, you know. It's, the car's just going all over the place of its own accord. Got my Spider-Man gloves on. I think those are just the uh, the placeholder hands. I mean, the car's understeering when I turn in. There's no real feel for that through the force feedback. Ah, oh, there we go. Too much throttle. Um, uh, it just feels off. Let's try again. As people have rightly pointed out, though. Um, you know, you have to give the tyres a chance to heat up. But saying that, drivers can, you know, in other simulators, you can go out, other simulators with tyre temperatures affecting how the cars handle, um, lift the speed, R factor, R factor 2. Um, not sure about that, of course, so, but you can, even though the cars have less grip when you first go out, you know, you can feel how much grip you've got. It, sh it shouldn't matter like the car should have less grip and should be harder to handle in various ways or or different to handle but it should still drive like a car it's like when drivers go out in the wet unless they're if they're not aquaplaning and they're actually driving the cars presumably they're you know wet tires on or whatever it's a different challenge and there, you know there'll be different thresholds to where the car completely lo loses controllability but it will still handle like a car I'm not quite sure the point I was making there. I guess it was that this, yeah, the t even though the tyres are cold in this, the tyres are cold, so that doesn't mean the car should be completely uncontrollable or just erratic, as it seems. Well, that was my fault. Oh dear, maybe my graphics card's melted or something. I seem to have some issues with the shadows. Oh no, I think it's just a, an, an object that's... Uh, its model's not been rendered properly. Which happens. Doesn't really matter. Just <laughs> try and do a clean lap. I'm, I'm not getting any real usable oh it's just there's no communication in the force feedback the physics appear to be all over the place with this car so i'm gonna have to just assume it's one of the newer cars that they haven't put much work into but we've kind of seen these physics characteristics in all the cars that i've tried so far so
<laughs> it's all over the place, but in a really strange way. It's like a shopping trolley filled with concrete. Right, that's that's terrible. I'm going to go for a different car. I'm just going to assume that that car needs more work. Select a vehicle. Oh, the BMWs. Last time I played the game, the GT cars are actually reasonably good. So let's try that. Of course, who knows, maybe the track surface has different properties. Maybe they're changing that. Maybe that's affecting how the cars grip in the road. Maybe that's doing certain things to physics. I should have probably just done all these on the same track. Oh dear. I seem to be having some lighting issues. Well, breaking the speed limit for the pit. It's not a problem. seems to be understeering in a really strange way. Shuffling around the corner there. I mean, the, the point at which the car bites, or the point at which it decides to understeer, just seems really, just seems bizarre. It, it doesn't seem right. Maybe that's how a BMW drives, but I don't believe it. I mean, this is exactly what was happening with the other cars, to more or less extent. That's too fast into that. I mean, this is uh, far more controllable than the, uh, the Zonda. But it, it feels as if it's got the same inherent... Oh, I'm so stupid. Uh, invisible wall, but that was my fault, so let's restart. No, I don't want to retire, I want to restart. Okay. That was me being a retard. Um it seems to have the same underlying physics characteristics as the other cars. They all seem to generally have the same thing going on with them. Just to a greater or lesser extent. I just don't feel in control of the car. I'm sure if we practiced it, lay down some more right laps. I feel like I'm, I'm this is from driving the car from a, a pole <laughs> suspended behind it, almost driving it delayed. That's a really useful visual analogy there, which I'm sure really conveys everything clearly. I do like this track again though. Some of these British tracks, uh, Brands Hatch, Donington, Knock Hill, um, I've forgotten the names of the other ones. Oh no, too fast. There's a whole bunch of tracks in England that are just really good, fun tracks to drive. I think America's it as well. It seems to have a lot of I don't honestly remember this part of the track. America, oh, okay, I get it, right. America is, has a lot of really nice tracks as well. Lots of, uh, lots of different changes in height. Nice variations in corners, quite tight. It'd be nice to see more of them come to uh, driving games. It's just, why, why, this, that's what the F1 car was doing, it's just weird drifts that just don't make any sense.
Oh, that, that was my fault that I put a bit of brake on. I mean, a lot of the issues that I think do come from the force feedback in this is, and maybe that's just limited to the G25 at the moment, maybe with other wheels, it's not as much of an issue. But normally the G25, I think, is a good sort of consumer benchmark, as even though, like I said earlier, it doesn't have the strength and it doesn't rotate particularly fast it does have really good initial response which allows you to then react to the car or at least get a good communication of what the game is sending to the force feedback right it's just strange <laughs> yeah it does seem that the game still has its same underlying characteristics that was in the earlier versions it's just improved somewhat but not enough for me to uh, personally i wouldn't put much time into this if it if it stays as it is now which obviously they're still working on it so i presume it's going to change substantially but hopefully they change the physics a lot as it is now uh the physics i'd say are erratic and to me less enjoyable than even gtr evo and so if you i don't know if you're going to put it on some kind of like ridiculous scale of physics believability i think you'd have for different reasons you'd have ac i racing uh, the top r factor one mods uh, GameStop car, all of them you could probably lump into a, you know a top category of yeah maybe they're not perfect but they uh, and they've all got problems but with the good cars in those games they're consistent and they seem to represent generally as you'd expect a real car to handle in a simulator then you get kind of like GTR Evo where it's a bit arcadey in some ways the cars seem a bit sluggish but it's consistent so it's it's fun as a game and there is a degree of realism in how a lot of cars handle. Then you start getting to with project cars at the moment where it's not really a simulator in that sort of consistency with the cars I've tried. Of course, there might be a car that's amazing. Someone should tell me to try it. Um, so, and it, it's kind of like, I'm sure if you played this game with assist on, then it'd be fine. If you played it with a gamepad, it'd be fine. But if you're starting to put, you know, 10 hours into a single track with a single car, I don't know if it's got enough depth to it or, or enough consistency or believability to the physics for it to really entertain for that length of time or justify putting that amount of time into it. I'm sure some people will put that amount of time into it, but as it is right now, I would not really call Project Cars a simulator. I'd say it's more of a... Uh, well, it's not really an arcade game, though. It's this weird... It's not. I, I hate the word simcade because that's just stupid. I don't think it's useful. But as it is right now, it's just some weird in between that's on the par with the with the console races, I guess. Forza. I don't think it's as good as Gran Turismo, but I haven't played Gran Turismo for ages, so I, I can't really make a fair comparison. So that's <laughs> that's my useless feedback for now, and that was a let's play of Project Cars. Uh, if anyone has any ideas of what you know what should be tried out, which car should actually be tested. Uh, what you know what would be a fair thing to actually look at to analyze it properly uh, of course this video is just me jumping in after not playing again for a while and having a quick look and seeing what my my thoughts are um so yeah give it drop a comment uh i hope this video was uh enjoyable to some people probably annoyed many people have fun keep racing and uh let's hope that project cars has got another year of development let's hope that it keeps going along and let's hope it can uh get to a level so we can have another simulator to challenge the current crop of top simulators and a simulator that's actually developed by a british company would be awesome thanks for watching 
subscribe and like, bang your head against a brick wall. Goodbye.